In this video, we'll be introducing the concept of evidence-based medicine, or EBM. Evidence-based medicine, or EBM, is the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values. EBM is frequently visualized using a Venn diagram that shows research evidence, clinical expertise, and patient values joining together. The concept of evidence-based medicine comes out of work done in the 1970s at McMaster University in Ontario, Canada. Dr. David Sackett, Dr. Brian Haynes, and Dr. Gordon Guyot were among the first to develop and write about this philosophy of medical practice and medical education. The term EBM first appeared in print in 1991 in the ACP Journal Club. As the strength of EBM has become apparent, other healthcare practitioners have developed their own versions and the philosophy has spread beyond healthcare to other fields. Many people now prefer to use the more general term of evidence-based practice, or EBP, to refer to the concept. EBM was the result of many factors, but some of the most influential were the increasing amount of information available to physicians and the speed at which clinical information was being updated. Today, information overload is nothing new to us, and most healthcare professionals accept that they will not be able to read and understand all the new evidence before they need it. Evidence-based medicine gives us a framework to find the evidence at the point of need. To practice EBM, there are five steps that are generally agreed upon. The first step is to assess your information need. Step two is to convert your information need into a focused, answerable question. Step three is to efficiently track down and acquire the best evidence with which to answer the question. Step four is to critically appraise the evidence for validity and clinical usefulness. Step five is applying the results in clinical practice in combination with your clinical expertise and the patient's values. At any point in the cycle, you may need to go back and redo a step. And after step five, it is important to go back and assess or evaluate the performance of the evidence in clinical application. There are several tools available to help you practice EVM. The PICO format is a tool to help you formulate an answerable clinical question. To find out more about the PICO format, please visit the Asking Clinical Questions page of the EBM Guide. Another tool is the Pyramid of Evidence, which is a popular way of visualizing the amount and hierarchy of medical literature. In the pyramid, the lowest levels represent evidence that is plentiful but may not be effective or a valid methodology for clinical decision making. In this version of the pyramid, we start with in vitro research or bench science, move up to animal research, and then ideas, editorials, and opinions. As we move further up the pyramid, we move into clinical literature types with observational design, which is stronger evidence. Examples of this are case reports, case series, case control studies, and cohort studies. Next, we have randomized controlled double-blind studies. And finally, at the very top, we find systematic reviews and meta-analyses, or our secondary literature. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses are products of the EBM process. This simple pyramid can be very helpful in reminding us what to look for when answering our clinical questions. However, this is not the only EBM pyramid. As with any simple representation of a complex concept, the pyramid continues to evolve and several different versions have been proposed over the years since its first development. Another tool that was developed as a result of the EBM process are clinical queries. Clinical queries can be accessed from the PubMed homepage and are a response to the clinician's need to efficiently find evidence in a database that currently has over 35 million citations. One of the most important byproducts of EBM has been the development of point-of-care clinical tools like Dynamed, UpToDate, and Essential Evidence Plus, to name just a few. These tools gather evidence, synthesize this evidence, and rate the evidence on its strength. They provide a quick way to access evidence-based information to answer many of your clinical questions. You may still hear a few critics of evidence-based medicine, 
Some have called it all statistics and algorithms, or even cookbook medicine. However, from its beginning, EBM has emphasized not just the research evidence, but the physician's clinical experience and the patient's values. EBM must involve all three components. To practice EBM, the clinician finds the evidence and then evaluates the evidence in the context of their knowledge and the needs of the individual patient before making a clinical decision.